Welcome to Spruce Grove Alliance Church, your home. Well, good morning, Spruce Grove Alliance Church. I trust that you joined us yesterday for the service, either in person or online, and um, and that uh, you are challenged by God's Word and encouraged by all that is happening uh, here at the church and spurred on to join in and uh, to engage and to take responsibility both at home and, and in the church. And uh, uh, yeah, you know, as I was talking to cameraman, I, I couldn't remember if I told this story a couple of weeks ago, maybe three, uh, we were setting up the beehives. Uh, for the winter and I mentioned on Wednesday that we put the or on Friday I'm sorry we put the the covers on the bees and so uh, we were putting styrofoam this is pre-covers we're putting styrofoams on there I put on my bee suit and I'll, I, I got a picture for you here camera I'll show you and me and my wife went to do it and I, I don't need to put the hood on and you know funny because my wife did she's she's uh she's more thorough than I am and uh, I thought I was fine a little bit of pride there on my part. And, oh, man, I start moving the thing. Well, boy, oh, boy, the bees came out and started stinging me. Well, I tried to put my hood on, and um, I got stung, and then the bees were in my hood, and <laughs> I ran for the garage. Yeah. And my wife kind of chuckled. Are you okay, honey? And I was too busy running to answer her and had to get my suit off. And, oh, brother. You know, I learned from that. Uh, I will never do that again. And in that sense, I suppose I've repented because I've, I'm not going to try that again. I'm going to go the right way. What does that have to do with this? Well, loosely, not much. But anyways, I tried to make a segue just for fun. That's what happens here in the Church of Sardis. And uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to chapter 3. We're going to pick up here in verse 3. I mentioned to you. That Jesus has, has said to the church of Sardis, wake up, you're dead, strengthen uh, what is left. In verse 3 it says, remember then what you have received and heard, keep it and repent. If you will not wake up, I will come like a thief and you will not know at what hour I will come against you. Yet you have still a few names in Sardis, people who are not soiled in their garments, and they will walk with me in white, for they are worthy. The one who conquers will be clothed thus in white garments, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my Father and the angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Jesus is, is calling the troops to rally. He's trying to awaken them from this slumber they're in and trying to help them understand how imperative uh, the, the change is needed. He says to them, remember, remember then what you received and heard. In other words, remember where you've come from. Remember the word of God that was proclaimed to you. Remember those who declared the gospel of Jesus Christ. Remember, remember how beautiful your salvation was and is. Keep it, he says, and repent. Uh, repent from your current actions. Repent from your current estate repent and 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 refuse to live in this lethargic lifestyle this lifestyle that chooses not to embrace the call that Christ has placed on each individual's life one of the things that i've noted is sometimes in the west evangelical churches we place such emphasis on a decision that we lose the importance of the journey of following Christ. We seem to think that, that we don't really need to follow Christ or that Christ's invitation to follow him begins and ends with a decision. I, I wonder if that grieves Jesus. 
Uh, to follow Christ is a decision, and it happens in a moment in time. Don't misunderstand me. But to follow Christ is to follow Him. It's, it's not simply intellectual assent. It's not simply sort of, a, you know, I got my checklist. I've, I've done the, the things required of me. It's not even about a reputation. I'm a Christian. It's, it's about pursuing Him. And that's what Jesus is pleading with the church of Sardis. Repent, turn to him. Wake up, he says again. And if you will not wake up, I will come like a thief in the night against you. Uh, those words uh, should, should cause every believer in Sardis to, to, to quiver that he would come like a thief in the night. That, that's the same expression used by Paul in Thessalonians. When, when speaking of the return of Christ, he's, he's saying that he will come like a thief in the night. And, and, and more than that. And, and that he will come against you. Those who refuse to wake up ultimately become the one that Jesus comes against. May that not be us. Yet you have still a few names in Sardis, people who have not soiled their garments. Uh, this is a, a very current image that Jesus is using. In pagan worship, they would often wear clean garments to go to their worship encounters or services. And, and Jesus is using this imagery that that the, the lifestyle of those in the church of Sardis had soiled their garments and, and they were no longer worthy. But there were some among them that were still wearing white garments and, and that they were worthy, he says at the end of verse 4. Uh, the one who had conquers will be clothed thus in white garments and I will never blot out his name out of the book of life. I will confess his name before my father and his angels. That's, that's an interesting expression, isn't it? Uh, in the Gospels, I want to say Matthew, but I may be wrong. He uses the same expression in regards to those who stand firm in the midst of great persecution and, and don't deny him, he will likewise not deny us between his father and the angels. One commentator I read on that suggested that the angels are those who are sent as messengers and ministers uh, uh, for those who stand firm in the gospel. And here we see that the angels are associated with the church and... And so for those who do not stand for Christ, who, who deny him, in essence, they don't need the angelic beings because they're not under any persecution or opposition. He will confess them before the Father and before his angel. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. A loved one's. May we slow our lives down enough to hear and to allow the blind spots in our lives to be corrected. And may we pursue him with all that we are. Let's pray. And so, Lord Jesus, in humility we come and we say we are far from perfect. And we invite you to search our hearts, O God, and to see if there be any unclean way in us. And may we receive your correction and your discipline. And that we would walk with you. What a great imagery that Jesus gives here with the church of Sardis. That they would walk with him. And that we'd be found faithful. Have your way with us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Not sure what the week holds for you or for me, 
but let's continue to look to the author and perfecter of our faith as he leads and guides us. God bless you. Thank you.